Good morning, friends, and uh, God bless you this morning. It's a beautiful morning here in beautiful upstate New York. This is the New York no one tells you about. And um, just out on my prayer walk this morning, meditating a little bit on the Lord and <clears throat> enjoying, enjoying this beautiful, beautiful lake. I don't know if you can see it over in the corner there. There's a little ripple, a little muskrat that I spooked this morning as I was walking around the lake, um, swimming across the lake. But I was meditating this morning on Psalm 1, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Uh, it says, Blessed is the one who walks not in the way of the wicked, nor sits in the seat of the mockers, but his delight is in the instruction of God, and in his instruction he meditates day and night. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that produces its fruit in every season and whose leaf never withers. And, um, and whatever he does shall prosper. And um, <clears throat> what does prosper mean to you? What does, what does it look like? You know, I, I committed my life to Christ when I was 17 years old. I was making $85 a week. And I was newly married with a baby on the way. I didn't start off the best. I'll put it that way. I didn't come from a family that went to church. I didn't come from a family that had any inklings of trusting God. But yet I knew in here that there was more to life than just struggling and working. There's more to life than 70, 80, or even 100 years in a hole in the ground. And most of us are not going to come to the end of our life wishing we'd spent more time at the office or that we had a bigger bank account. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I've made very, very little money and been very poor at times. And I've been extremely prosperous at times. I, the last few years of my life, I made better money than I ever anticipated making, although I always expected to prosper. But prosperity isn't always about dollars and cents. You know, prosperity looks a lot different to a lot of different people. And um, prosperity can be happiness. We can be very wealthy in relationships. We can be very wealthy in our relationship with God. And, um, you know, I was, I was a very happy young man walking with Christ, making $85 a week. And money has never been the source of my happiness. And if our source of happiness is external, it's based on stuff and money, what we have, um, that's very, very short-lived, very temporal, and uh, those things are going to pass away. You know, America has become a land of people who become slave to their stuff. And, um, you know, hey, I like stuff, but you know what? If I don't have the stuff, it's not going to be the end of me. It's not going to be the end of my happiness. And... Um, you know, the truth of the matter is, is my prosperity, my happiness, um, my joy isn't tied up in stuff. It's tied up in the people that I love. It's tied up in serving God and honoring him. And that's the source of my joy. And I hope that all of us can recognize and attain and reach out and experience and embrace that source of joy. You know, as a pastor, I've done a lot of teaching and training and counseling. And um, typically, things revolve around just a few simple areas. You know, in marriage, the, the common areas that you have to fix or address is communication, sex, money, and roles of authority and how to honor and respect one another as they fulfill their specific roles and um, money is always a biggie and you know I've said this before if you don't manage life life will manage you and what do I mean by that you have to be proactive and make decisions to help life unfold the way that you want you have to plan 
And if you don't do that with your money, you're going to be pushed and pulled based on demands that are placed upon you because of the lack of planning. You know, for most people, financial problems, it's not about the amount of money that they make. It's about how they manage the amount of money they make. If, you know, more money isn't the answer most of the time. If you fail to manage $100 a week, $500 a week, $600 a week, if you don't manage that and live within the budget and the means that you have, more money is not going to be, more money is not the answer. Because if you fail to manage with $500 a week, you're going to fail to manage with $1,000 a week. I know a lot of people that make a lot of money, have great jobs, but they live out of a spirit of poverty because they never learn to manage their life or manage their money. And, um, and they're always playing catch up. They're always making decisions on short term happiness. And then then they're fighting fires the rest of the week until they get their next paycheck. And, um, and so money often is not the answer to our problems. Management is the answer to our problems. Managing what we have, managing the resources that we have. And so that's why I say you either manage life or life will manage you. Sadly, I've worked with a lot of people that made a lot more money than me, but they didn't live like it because they failed to manage. It, they were all the time trying to play catch up and all the time you know, throwing money at things that were just foolish. And a lot of us are outrunning, we're trying to outrunning, we're trying to outrun bad decisions of our past. And sometimes it takes a while. You know, a lot of people are, will say, well, you know, the devil's, the devil's after me. The, mo the truth of the matter is, is most of us don't pose a threat to the devil. We pose a bigger threat to ourselves by the failure to actually think through what we're doing. And so I know a lot of people that make a lot of money, but they fail to manage and so they fail to prosper. And, um, and so, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor sits in the seat of the scoffer, but he shall delight in the teachings of God. In his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. His fruit produces fruit every season and his leaf doesn't wither. We can live like that. That's Psalm 1, one of my favorite passages of scripture. Whatever he does shall prosper. We can live and walk in a place of prosperity, but our prosperity first really needs to be focused and centered on our walk with God and being at one with ourselves and who God's called us to be and who God's created us to be. You know, we have sent missionaries different places in the world and places of abject poverty, absolute, just dirt poor, but people, the pictures you see coming back are people cheesing with huge smiles. They're, they're desperately poor, but they have huge smiles. And the reason is, is because their happiness isn't based on the stuff that they have or feeling like they're a victim of life and a victim of circumstances. Their joy is in their walk and connection with God in connection with other believers, people of faith, and walking out their God-giving purpose and talents. And so our happiness must be rooted in something better than stuff, better than a bank account, better than uh, do I keep up with the neighbor? You know, oh, they bought a new vehicle. I, I, should, I deserve a new vehicle. Listen, those are the kind of mentalities and decisions that you'll be outrunning all your days if you make decisions based on that stuff. God wants us happy and wants us to prosper, but we also have a responsibility in managing life, managing our money, and making good decisions so that we're not, not having to outrun our dumb decisions for years and years. If you do the same thing over and over, but expect a different result, you're just kidding yourself. And so, what is your joy tied up in? What is your prosperity tied up in? I hope that you're wealthy financially, but more than that, I hope you're wealthy in your walk with God. I hope you're wealthy in relationships. You know, my dad was never a wealthy person when it come to a bank account, but he was a wealthy person when it come to friends, when it come to people who loved him, when it come to people who he loved and who he treated, how he treated people. 
And um, he wasn't even, you know, he didn't live most of his life as a believer. And so, um, and so anyhow, I just want to encourage you, go back and look at Psalm chapter one, one of my favorite Psalms, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor sits in the seat of the mocker, but he shall delight, he delights in the instruction of God and in his instructions, he meditates day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, and what, and his leaf, he produces fruit in every season, and its leaf shall not wither, whatever he does shall prosper, whatever he does shall prosper, God wants you to prosper, but you have to honor God first, and so I, you know, one of the things I learned so early is to be generous toward God, be generous toward the ministry, be generous toward the kingdom of God, when we make God our priority, and the kingdom of God our priority, he turns and he honors us for doing so. Honor the Lord and he will turn and honor you. And, uh, and so, hey, that's not rocket science. That's just life. And, um, and so anyhow, God bless you. I hope you have a fantastic day. Talk to you again soon.